we already had a good, um, I hope, a good, I was going to say injection, that, think of another word, impartation of yeah. <laughs> worship and uh, tithing and offerings, communion. Uh, really, we all need that fellowship and uh, that encouragement. And uh, I hope you're looking forward to receiving the word. I'm looking forward to preaching it. And I'm just going to uh, read um, an introduction to the title of the message, which is Hold Fast. There's two reasons for this title. There's some interesting things in here uh, in this message that you need, truly need to fasten your seatbelt. Uh, hold Fast also has a uh, spiritual uh, application in the sense that it's Hold Fast. And it's based on a scripture that those two words, Hold Fast, from, uh, I think it's from the New King James translation, but Hold Fast to our faith, to our hope. Yep. I'll read an introduction first, um, and then I'll uh, pray and start reading the first scripture. So, standing firm when the world says give up. Yeah. In this world, it's becoming more and more unpopular to be a Christian. Soon, it may become dangerous. You, know, you might think, I came up with these words. No, I didn't. Those were the words of Melvin Laird. Never heard of him before, but a former congressman and defense secretary for President Richard Nixon. He made that comment more than 50 years ago. And I thought it was difficult, if, if he thought it was difficult to practice the faith back then, he wouldn't believe the hostility of the culture today. The church is being pressed in from all sides, urged to abandon our faith or abandon the public square. We can do neither. Do not be afraid, but speak. Do not keep silent. That was the message the Lord had for Paul when he was facing the cancel culture. That was not a new thing. The cancel culture of Corinth in Acts 18. Listen carefully, and you'll know what I'm aiming at. Silence is not an option. It wasn't then, and it can't be now. We must speak the truth when people want to hear it, and even if they don't. But let's not miss the second part of what the Lord has to say in that same chapter of Corinthians 18. For I am with you, my presence is with you, I have many people in this city. That is true today. God still has many people in this nation. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, an outspoken pastor, now I'm not outspoken at all, but he was, an outspoken pastor, theologian, underground seminary professor, and spy, yes, he was a spy against the Third Reich, said, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless, not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have your word. We have the heroes of faith, like Dietrich Bonhoeffer. We have church history. But most of all, Lord, we have your Holy Spirit still present on this earth. And I pray, Father God, that you empower these words that it will not be my flesh or my experience or last week's anointing, but today's anointing to preach your word to those right physically here and those who listen online. I speak blessing on these words and that they may be empowered by your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us read. You can always follow from your own translations, um, but also there will be on the screen. Reading, uh, first of all, from uh, Hebrews Three verse 6. Yeah. I'm reading from the uh, New King James Version. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, we hold fast, remember the title, we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope, firm to the end. Now that's what I want to talk about and I want to encourage us in. Hold on firm to the end. Also past the 17th of December. Hold on firm to the end. 
Because many Christians are getting weary and tired. Lord, I expected your return, or more specifically, the rapture this year. We are so close. Hold on. Hold on. Because we know from the parable of the ten virgins that all virgins were asleep. And that's nothing to do with time difference. That has everything to do that even the five faithful virgins, they were asleep. Like the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. They could not even stay awake for one hour. Mind you, that was before Pentecost. But still, hold on, hold fast. And don't allow you to be sent, be sent into fear. It's, a lot of it is bluff. A lot of it's even against the Commonwealth law of Australia. But they hold fast. And it's not just Australia. I just absolutely amazed reading about the news headlines in Austria. We've lived for nearly seven or around seven years in Austria, in Vienna, Austria ourselves. What has happened to this nation? What is happening? And that's where I want to, to go this morning. What is happening and encourage us with this. I'm reading also from Hebrews 3.14 from the New International Version. When I use the New International Version, it's from the before 2011 translation. If you have any questions about that, I'll clarify that. Hebrews 3.14, uh, we have come to share in Christ. Indeed, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. And I want to clarify this morning also what that end is. Because later on, time allowing, I'll read the letter from Paul to the Thessalonians explaining that confusion regarding what the end is and the difference between the day of Christ and the day of the Lord. Uh, you don't know this man, do you? Um, <laughs> it's amazing. He was actually listening to this and this is pure coincidence that he comes up I've given Brendan the time when to start. I'm not going to focus any... Uh, just pause it. I need to go back to uh, 1.30. It's not so much about the presenter, um, it's more of that little clip that he got a hold of, of from Prince Charles in the meetings in, uh, in Scotland, um, before it was edited out. Wow. You need to listen very carefully, just bear with the accent, what Prince Charles is saying. Yeah, so if we can put that on. What he says is scary. So pay attention to this. Uh, this is unbelievable. But uh, let's take a listen to what Prince Charles says here. Genuinely renewable and sustainable. So, ladies and gentlemen, my plea today is for countries to come together to create the environment that enables every sector of industry to take the action required. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector, with trillions at its disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with a great... Trillions at his disposal. Military style action is what he's talking about. But let me just go back for just a second. It's almost like something possessed him to say this. And I can tell you this, it was not a Freudian slip. Now I know they've tried to correct it since he's made this speech. But he didn't make a mistake here, folks. This is what he said. And he knew what he was saying. Let me say it again. Let me rewind it so you can hear this. It's very subtle. Take a listen. To as many of whom are burdened, by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. Military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global sector. Now that's scary. That sounds like a one-world government. That sounds like a new world order. 
But look what he goes on to say. Pay attention to the subtlety here. With trillions at his disposal. Trillions at his disposal. Who is he? Good point. This has been edited out later. You won't find it back online. Who is he? Let us continue reading. Daniel 9.27 Whoa, we are not in the last days. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. That means seven years. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation. Until the end, you've heard that word a few times this morning, until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. So some of you probably are familiar with this. But this is he where Prince Charles is referring to and all these prime ministers there they obviously know more including our own prime minister have heard that speech not everybody who says is a Christian is a Christian that's so true yeah. because the angel masquerades as a light of angel uh, sorry as an angel of light are you surprised so the building blocks, the red heifer, and everything else for the temple service that is described in the book of Ezekiel are not fulfilled yet. The Orthodox Jewish people in Israel have prepared everything and they've even found through the entrance line the Levitical priests ready to start a service. This is not a secret, you can read that on websites and they are not necessarily believing in the Messiah Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, but they are looking still for the Messiah and they want to build this temple. So it will be fulfilled. So this Antichrist, which is obviously alive, obviously he's an adult of adult age and extremely powerful and if you think that from Australia to Austria, they're all talking about the same dates, the same mandates, oh, but that is a conspiracy theory, that's just pure coincidence. No. Of course, I mean that in a sarcastic way, in a sense, because that is not a coincidence. And they all seem to receive their mandates directly on their fax machine or whatever, directly in their office, like, oops, 17th December, yes, we will. That's all, and talking to unbelievers even, they say, yeah, it's, it's, it's not normal. They don't know where it's coming from because they don't know that good book. So he will obviously, uh, and that we can find the book of Daniel very, also I don't want to go, that's maybe another message, that he very likely will be uh, Jewish because it says he will not worship the God of his fathers, of his forefathers. So it's in that context, he will abolish every god and he will not worship the god of his fathers, which is not referring to a Christian background, it's clearly referring to the ancestry line of being Jewish, because the Jews will never ever acknowledge a pure, maybe is half European, half Jewish, most likely, they will never ever acknowledge a pure Gentile antichrist. So he will be most likely half Jewish, half Gentile, mostly Euro uh, I think European, very likely based on another message I preached regarding the restored Roman Empire. And he will make peace and people will be uh, so fed up with weak government, with corrupt government, with corrupt corporations, sending all their manufacturing to China. People will be so fed up with it all, Christians and non-Christians, they're like, Finally, a man who puts in some order. Mm. How do I come to this conclusion? It's because you need to study the previous antichrists to study, to understand this present one. And what a lot of people forget is that Hitler was voted in. 
with 99% of the votes. Why? Because he was amazing, popular, restoring the great German right. They were in an economical crisis and the inflation was so that they could one day could buy a piece of bread for one Deutsche Mark and the next day was they had to pay 10 Deutsche Mark. And so our governments, they are working hard to get us in debt. It is not a coincidence. Just hand out the money. Yeah. <laughs> Where does all this money come from, from these PCR tests and everything else and the vaccinations that are 100 million times more expensive than any other medication? It's our taxpayers' money and they are working ourselves in debt and even economists are saying that we can't even pay us this debt till the third generation after us. Well, there won't be a third generation after us in that sense, the way that the world is going, but it all has a purpose because when you bring the economy down and hyperinflation, I'm not talking about economy or politics, but it's, I have to, to explain this point, is that we will see what has happened in history and that Hitler, he's like, started building up, rebuilding the industry, started building the autobahn, motorway, and all that, and they're like, yeah, we'll be a great nation again, and we follow this leader, and we'll vote for this leader. See, they didn't vote for an evil leader. And, of course, evil wasn't as hard then, of course, but he wasn't revealed as that to the German people till he got them all. Yeah. So he learned from the previous ones, including Napoleon and, and um, Mussolini and uh, Nero and all that, but I don't want to go into that. All I'm saying is, that is how the world is getting ready for him, as Prince Charles is referring to. The world is getting ready for it, and so he will make peace, he will restore order, he will restore economy. The Gentiles are happy, the Jews are happy, and he, he will make a final, oh, that word final solution, that has a wrong context, but he'll bring us in a solution for that two-state thing in Palestine, Israel, and he will make peace, he will set them down on the table, they will sign a peace accord, the Jewish people like, oh, finally. And we can rebuild our temple. And then halfway in these three and a half years, he will put a sudden, a sudden stop to it. And why do I refer to that? So because we say, well, we might have been already taken, that is very likely and most likely, and I'll come to that as well. But it's important to understand because if so many Christians, sincere believers today, are all and pastors and church leaders and denominations and whole church denominations are already deceived with a particular medication, then they will fall for the next thing as well. They will fall for the digital ID as well. Oh yes, but it's only for this. That's not the mark of the beast. Oh, you're one of these conspiracy theorists. That's what they will say. It's a, not so much a test for the world. It's a test for the church. And there are already so many churches who will enforce it and mock other pastors who think otherwise. And they will mock just as hard when they warn the believers against the digital ID. Oh yeah, but that's not the mark of the beast yet. But see, that's the whole point. To get people to do something, you take them to a step program. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like they read the Mein Kampf from Hitler, which is translated My Battle. Step by step. Well, Hitler was possessed by the devil, so we know where it's coming from originally and still is. Let us continue after this shocking revelation from Prince Charles. And it's not the first mishap that, some, that leaders suddenly say something they maybe didn't intend to say. Same as a, um, a health official in New South Wales. They, they, she said, well, we better get a good grip on this. We're now in a new world order. And it's like, hello? A health official? What has you to do with a new world order? It was a slip of the tongue, I'm sure. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 14 to 16, 
and I just want to go into, and I want to not sow panic, but hope and faith in us, that there's a difference between the day of Christ and the day of the Lord. Matthew 24, verse 14 to 16. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the Daniel, by Daniel, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, remember we already read been and the Lord Jesus confirming this here, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. The Lord Jesus doesn't make mistakes. And this cannot be interpreted allegorically or spiritually. And the problem, that I, because a lot of Christians in the past had a problem with this, they say, oh well, we as a church now are Israel. Yeah. So, this is symbolic. And the Apostle Paul has clearly explained in Romans 9, 10 and 11 that there is no spiritual Israel. There's a real Israel, the descendants of Abraham, the last portion of them returned in 1948 to their homeland that was promised to Abraham. And even though there was a time of diaspora, spreading of all the Jews all around the world as far as China, that was in God's plan, temporarily, well in God's eyes temporarily, 2000 years is a long time for us, and then bring them back and prepare them for what is coming because he will deal again with the descendants of Abraham. And so what many pastors and evangelists believe, and that's with a good motive, and they preach the gospel, uh, talk about Jesus, and that will always have power. But they got their timing wrong. And this gospel of the kingdom, see, it's a gospel of the kingdom, is the other witnesses get that confused, the Mormons get that confused, the Seventh day Adventists get that confused, and most mainline denominations get this confused that the gospel of the kingdom is about the restoration of Israel. And that people need to repent and turn to God, Jew and Gentile. But that the kingdom is back on this land on the Mediterranean Sea. We as a church, and there's even songs written in the Bible, we are not building the kingdom. Before you excuse me of heresy, I'm going to clarify this. Our calling is to preach the word of God undiluted and make disciples yeah. and then when you have a group of disciples you form a church you appoint elders pastors leaders you don't plant churches see it's not even in the bible to plant churches so true, yeah. that's another shocker for a lot of people the calling is to make... What did the apostles... The apostles have laid a pattern for us. They went into a city. They went to an island of Malta. They, they went to, to Corinth. They went to Spain. They went to Africa. And they went to the towns... First they went to the synagogues. And those, then they gathered a group of people around them who had from the Jews who wanted to listen. And then when the rest of the Jews didn't want to listen, they went to the town square, preached the gospel. There was a, a bit of fruit. People came back for the next meeting. And they made them... In, baptized them into water, baptized them into Holy Spirit, and they formed a church. Not the other way around. It's, it's kind of an interesting uh, concept. Now, in, I understand in our society we need to form a legal entity first in Australia and most countries, and that's, the Lord understands that. We had to form a legal entity first so we can rent a building, and the Lord understands that. But that is a legal matter. I'm talking about the spiritual aspect. Is the calling is to make disciples, and we are not building the kingdom. Hence, that whole kingdom now theology 
and ap apostolic reformation and building the kingdom. We are building the kingdom. No, you're not. That is a false doctrine. Who's going to build the kingdom? The gospel of this kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And that is not the church. The church is already taken. It is the 144,000 witnesses from the 12 tribes of Israel. How do they know they're of the 12 tribes? Well, I'll leave that up to the Lord. I'm not too worried about it. And they formed together 12 times 12,000, 144,000. Oh, but that's symbolic. It's talking about the body of Christ. Seriously? If it says 144, if it says seven days, it's seven days. Six days creation, one day rest. If it says 144,000, it's 144,000. Because if we don't believe that, you might as well throw the whole Bible out. You're very black and white, Pastor. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> Just take the word for God for what it is and don't try to twist it. Twist it. I call that radiology. That's not theology. You read something in there, it's not there. It's called embellishment or radiology. <laughs> now I understand, don't get me wrong, that there are Christians maybe who don't understand this, what I'm just saying. They're just as much a Christian as I am. I'm not judging them, but I do want to preach on this. Um, that it is an incorrect doctrine and puts us on the wrong foot and the wrong expectation. Because it's not, yes, it's... We need to speak the truth, and I said that in our introduction. We need to share the gospel, we need to share Jesus, so we can make disciples and build this church. But the building of the kingdom, the final building of the kingdom, will be done through the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, returned, and 144,000 witnesses, and the son of David, Yeshua, Yeshua Mashiach in Hebrew, and he will again sit on the throne of David and not the church. It's clear he says he will come back with the clouds. And clouds, which most Bible scholars agree with that in this context, is always referring to the cloud of witnesses, referring to saints, referring to people, referring to resurrected saints, coming back with the Lord Jesus to reign and rule. This kingdom will be preached. To, but it doesn't say then the end will come. But see, the end is they are referring to the day of the Lord and not the day of Christ. And that's a separate message, but I want to encourage us. The day of Christ is when we as believers stand before the judgment seat of Christ and the rapture right after the rapture and then the uh, wedding feast. Now, I don't know if some might... Slightly difference on the time sequence. I don't care. I'm going to want to be there. I want to be there no matter what the time sequence. Whether it's the, the wedding feast first and then the judgment and then the judgment. Is there. I personally think the Lord wants to talk with us first before we have a meal with Him. That's my theory. Yeah, so the sequence is not that important because praise God if we make it, we're there. <laughs> yeah, but let's make sure that we make it. Now, why is this so important? I thought you would never ask. So, this is so important because we today live in the same confusion a little bit as the Thessalonians in Thessaloniki in Greece, northern Greece. Actually been there in the past many times. Food was so good. Anyway, second that was for work. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 1 to 12. Now in regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to meet Him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly unsettled or alarmed. May I encourage us for that? Don't be alarmed by the 17th of December. Don't be alarmed by a lot of things you read online. There's a lot of rubbish out there as well of prophets and other people, same as all these prophets who, who predicted that Trump would be president. Yeah. 
Well, then you're not a prophet anymore. Don't dare you call yourself call still a prophet. If it's like, oh yes, be it. No, you're a false prophet. <laughs> so anyway, there's so much stuff out there, but so do be uh, quickly unsettled or alarmed either by so-called prophetic revelation or of a spirit or a message I'm reading from the Amplified or a better um, or sorry, a letter alleged to be from us. There's a lot of people who claim to be apostles or claiming to have a word with apostolic authority even today. To the effect that the day of the Lord has already come. See, you understand now I hope the difference between the day of the Lord and the day of Christ. The Thessalonians were waiting for the day of Christ and there was false reports regarding eschatology, end time teaching, even then, that the day of the Lord already come and they were in panic. They were like... And one of the reasons was that they were severely persecuted. So they thought, we are in the tribulation. No, the Apostle Paul was setting that straight. And I want to set that straight too. We are not in the great tribulation and we will not go to the great uh, tribulation. The message I preached about a half year ago, I went to the whole uh, set of reasons historically uh, and biblically why we're not going to the Great Tribulation. There's one thing that popped in my mind yesterday while we were driving, and I was thinking that scripture popped in my mind um, when Abraham had a little bargaining thing as a good Middle Eastern man with the Lord God Almighty, and he's saying, well, if there's 50 people in Sodom and Gomorrah, you wouldn't destroy it for 50 righteous, and then 14, 13. And then, Lord, if there was, uh, that's Middle Eastern bargaining, um, Lord, if there were ten people, you would not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of these ten righteous. What's the point I'm trying to make here is that God has not changed. He didn't suddenly because it's the New Testament that he became into a mellow God or a different God. He's the same God. He only gave us a revelation in the New Testament of who he is completely. Now, it was pretty bad in Sodom and Gomorrah because people were knocking at the door and wanted to have sex with the male guests. Never understood Lot uh, giving up his daughters. What a father. Anyway, that's another topic. Um, I didn't understand that part and I want to preach on it. But the, the point is, it was pretty bad. It was pretty wicked. It was so wicked. And yet the Lord would not have destroyed the city if there was ten righteous in that city. Do you think that the same Lord God will allow, will send Christians, born again Christians, where the lead Lord Jesus died for on the cross, shed his blood, gave his life, will send us from Revelation chapter 4 to chapter 22, 21, um, through seven series of plagues which are called the wrath of of God. They are not discipline, they are not correction, which we all receive, they are not just hard times, which all Christians can go through. It says we will go through many tribulations, which a lot of the anti-rapture teachers use. Yes, we will go through many tribulations, but that's only because you read a certain translation. And other translations say we'll go through many hardships or difficulties. We will not be going through the great tribulation. And that is the day of the Lord. Let no one in any way deceive or entrap you, for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first. I know there's some different interpretations on this, but I'll stick with this one. That which I still believe is the correct one comes first. That is explained here between brackets. That is the great rebellion, the abandonment of the faith by professed Christians. That's what we're in right now. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction, the Antichrist, the one who is destined to be destroyed. That's the one Prince Charles was talking about, but he is not revealed yet who he is. And if he is revealed then we are already quickly being ushered into the Great Tribulation. So between that time frame, which I don't know, only the Heavenly Father knows, where He says to His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Go, Son, fetch my bride. 
That particular time, I don't know, nobody knows besides the heaven, but I'm only giving you an indication that it is not that it is not the day of the Lord, that it's not happening while the Antichrist has set himself up and is revealed, and the Apostle Paul clearly explains that here. A few more minutes, you know, patience with me here. Some will say, and I've heard this argument so often, yes, but there's been terrible times before. So don't take it too serious. Yes, I do take it serious. Why? In my humble, short lifetime, I've gone through 12 things that I think are significant, but they're not necessarily signs for this, what we're now talking about. I grew up in the Cold War in Europe. Remember the oil crisis? Some no cars on Sunday. Remember Chernobyl? I grew up on a farm. We had to destroy all crops that were growing on the field, and it was more than 50 more than a thousand kilometers away and the next day that cloud came onto crops and farms in the Netherlands and as far as England. But that was not the end. The fall of the Berlin Wall, I was there myself physically. The fall of the Iron Curtain, I was there myself physically. Revolution in Romania, they shot, don't get any ideas, <laughs> they shot Tarcescu and his wife by the army. I was there actually at that time in uh, Bucharest. War in Yugoslavia, I was there myself physically, was caught between the Croats and the Serbs, stuck there for a week, they're not nice people. Two Gulf Wars, you remember? 9-11, last, not least, those are 12 things, the withdrawal of the troops from Afghanistan, and then the 12th one, sorry, potential war between Israel and Iran. But those are not signs of the end. There's five things I believe we're now in, which are the signs of the end, regarding the coming of, of the rapture. The digital ID and artificial intelligence. The power of the leftist, distorted, lying media and tech companies. Two. Three. The corrupt and tyrannical governments all over the world, seemingly following the same agenda, dates and dictates, over a flu virus. Four. The Great Reset, if you think this is a conspiracy theory, just it's available, the book, you can buy the book from Klaus Schwab, there's nothing secret. And fifthly, mandating and coercing people into a never-ending cycle of untested medication. Yeah. Yeah. Those, I believe, are the five signs that are more significant than the other twelve I mentioned before. Going fast for the sake of time. But I want to finish this here. Verse 4. Who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and so insolently above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he actually enters and takes his seat in the temple of God, publicly proclaiming that he himself is God. Remember that scripture where it says even the elect might be deceived if that were possible? You see that happening today that is people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and are sacrificed, they do not see the signs of the time. Let us pray that they will, their eyes will be opened. Do, not, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I was telling you these things? And you know what restraint, careful, pay attention, and you know what the power of the preaching of the gospel is in the prepositions, as a famous preacher once said, I think it's actually Charles Spurgeon, and you know what restrains him from being revealed. It is so that he will be revealed at his own appointed time <clears throat> for the mystery of lawlessness, rebellion against divine authority, and the coming sign of lawlessness is already at work. But it is restrained until, only until he who restrains it is taken out of the way. So we have two he's here. One is the Antichrist. One is the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. The what is the church. The Holy Spirit indwells the church. You could say as an argument, yes, but the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. How can the Holy Spirit be taken away? Well, I can answer that question. 
on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has always been around. Genesis 1 says, let us make men, us, Trinity, let us make men in our image. It's been always been. Trinity has always been there, but it was specifically, pour, if it can be poured out on the day of Pentecost, more significantly and more detailed and more presently, then it can also, the, object, uh, the opposite take place. So when the rapture happens, the opposite takes place. When the church is taken, the presence and the restraining power of the church and the Holy Spirit are taken away. Do you think it's bad now? Then all restraint is removed. And the coming of the Antichrist, the lawless one, is, is through the activity of Satan. Sorry, I says need my glass. Oh yeah, tended with great power. All kinds of counterfeit miracles that we see a lot of today in deceptive signs and false wonders, all of them lies. And by unlimited seduction to evil and with all the deception of wickedness for those who are perishing, because they did not welcome the love of the truth of the gospel so as to be saved. They were spiritually blind and rejected the truth that would have saved them. This whole flu thing is extremely significant because it's such a powerful delusion and it is so closely connected to being spiritually blind. Because of this God will send upon them a misleading influence or other translations say powerful delusion an activity of error and deception it's right reading the news headlines. So they will believe the lie. See, if you be given to one lie, you will fall for the next lie. And that's what's happening here, people. In order that all may be judged and condemned who did not believe the truth about their sin and the need for salvation through Christ, but instead took pleasure in unrighteousness. I hope I didn't discourage you with that, but the aim was to encourage that, the same as the Thessalonian church, don't worry guys, the day of the Lord, this is not the day of the Lord, this is not the setting of the Antichrist, he is well on the life, as Prince Charles testified to, but because of that we have this blessed hope. So hold on there, what about the children? The children, when you teach them about Christ and the Lord, they'll go with you. Uh, don't know about pets. I think the Lord is faithful and he also took animals in the ark. I can't answer that question. But the Lord is faithful and he's just. So look forward to this blessed hope. Yeah, and let us remember the title. Hold fast. Don't panic. Hold fast. Let us stand to our feet if we can. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And, uh, there was so much to share this morning. I'm a little bit over time. But pray, Father God, that... Um, this message will bless us and uh, strengthen us and that you guide us according to your will. And Father God, that we hold fast to the faith and will not waver and speak blessing on all of us, young and old, also the children in the children's church, that we all hold on fast and also those who couldn't be here this morning. Father God, that you bless them and strengthen us and guide us in all truth and we will be overcomers in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you.